theoretical part of why we started on the road to open source design. And now we're going to switch microphones. Yeah, we have to switch microphones, so sorry. Uh, let's see. Yeah, sorry, that took some work. Um, when we were uh, trying to get in this open source mindset or trying to design, uh, to, to open source our design process, we first uh, thought of the challenges that come with design and what makes design hard. And if we look at design at what it uh, actually is from an artistic perspective, um, we got to, to these three points. And well, they're pretty straightforward. If you go to the next slide. Um, they're great. It's what brought us these things. It's, uh, it's, it means creative freedom, and that's, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, uh, but unless you're an engineer, or unless, unless you look at this from an uh, uh, engineering uh, perspective, or when you're trying to, do, to design software, then the, exactly these things become kind of a bummer, because their um, design lacks boundaries. Uh, it's subjective. Uh, it's isolated. Much of it is done in isolation. So all these things that were great qualities before suddenly become uh, a problem. Um, and you see it here. People, and, and we noticed the same thing in our company. We grew pretty fast. So we had these designers um, working on our products, but were roughly doing the same thing, but not really understanding each other. So that equal problems. Um, and you see it in our uh, four main products here. Uh, we have our uh, client platform, we have our e-learning platform, our website and our plugin, our WordPress plugin. And as you can see, they're roughly the same, but they were all, uh, were all created by designers in isolation, not really um, uh, having the same context, having the same knowledge of what we were doing. They were working in isolation. Luckily, uh, open source is the answer, or at least to us. And getting in, into an open source mindset really helped us addressing these uh, issues. Um, first, we forced ourselves, or open source thinking empowered ourselves to uh, create somewhat of an arena, uh, a little less violent one than this one. Um, well, we wanted a place where design can be practiced in the open. Uh, and, and, and a place that really empowered us to be transparent about what we were doing as a team. Um, so this is a very important pillar for, for us. And the second one is we wanted to create a playing field. So we wanted to create a playing field and which was uh, uh, something of a system with clear rules, clear boundaries, um, uh, which um, taught, taught everyone on the team um, um, to do to do the same things. So they, they started to speak each, uh, the same language. And that empowered us to create work that was transferable. Uh, transferable sorry. So you got um, the design from one designer and the other designer automatically understood what he was doing and how, how he could contribute to it. Um, so these two pillars, uh, their uh, transparency and transferability, are uh, vital ingredients in this journey to open source um, for us. Uh, but the main takeaway here is that this really starts inside your company walls. Um, sorry, you have to switch again. Last time. There go. Thank you. So this was the more effort part, and now Tim is going to talk about uh, our actual... Experience. Yes, because this all sounds very smart, but we didn't know any of this before we started, and it was a process to get to... Um, being able to present this to you today, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because when Yo started about seven years ago, it was a small company. It was uh, roughly the people you see here. Um, this looks a little uh, more uh, elegant than maybe than it was. It was a little uh, startup in an office somewhere. Uh, everyone was in the same room, um, and that meant that the lines were short. Everyone could. You know, if they, if they needed to discuss a problem, they could just turn this way, discuss it with the founder or with the designer or with the marketer or whoever was there. Um, so that, that was very easy to, to have everybody on the same page. But uh, as we started growing, this became more of a problem. Because when you have one designer, that one designer has all the context for all the designs that are being made. 
uh, even if there are other people that have to uh, offer input, that's the one that's doing the design. So everything by that nature should be pretty consistent. Um, when we were two designers, it was still pretty consistent. It was lucky that they were married, um, so that helped. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but when we got three designers and over, it's it started to become a bit of a problem. We had different generations, people coming from different work fields. Um, so then we started to see the design differences that were in the screenshots before. People had different influences, different preferences. Yeah. Uh, and even if we were still in the same room at that time, um, the, each individual designer had um, assignments that maybe um, targeted another part of the company. So you, I could be working with marketing, uh, Erwin could be working um, with uh, uh, someone else in the company, and we wouldn't really know what the other was doing. We sort of had a shared um, sort of understanding of what we were trying to do with the designs, but there wasn't a really clear guideline on how it should look and, and what it absolutely shouldn't look like. Yeah. So we had this problem. We have very great designers. They're making great work, but how do we really make a team out of them? Yeah. And our answer to that was to create the design meeting, which Luke spoke about, an arena in which we could uh, discuss design tools, uh, discuss everything that we were working on, um, and uh, sort of get closer together, get more on the same page about what we were doing. Um, and in the beginning, it was just us sitting on a couch, looking at designs, talking it over. It was already very helpful. To, you know, when we were designing, sometimes we just get into our own space and keep going. And so this was good to sort of break it open a little bit, and we had our team lead there to discuss things. Yeah. Um, but the design meeting, uh, once it sort of started to take off, um, it got interesting for other people in the company um, because design is, of course, a very interesting field. It's very visual, so people can just walk in and look at some cool stuff. Uh, so we started getting people from development coming in and wanted to see yeah, people from marketing. Um, yeah. And we, this was good because we were getting more uh, outside perspectives, more diversity, people coming in from different disciplines, um, really talking things over. Um, so that was good. Um, and at that point, we started getting close to a design system. So we were starting to codify what are the things we're designing and what should they look like, what shouldn't they look like, which elements are we using, uh, what should be the structure of a page or of a plugin. Um, but we had one big problem, uh, which I'll get to after we're talking about this part. <laughs> Um, the design system is kind of based on material in the beginning because you know, it, it was, we didn't really know where to start. So we took something that we saw a lot, material design, uh, a lot of people are using Android and in Gmail. It, you're confronted with it a lot and it looks good. And the benefit of the material design is that it has this entire philosophy behind it and we could sort of use that as, as the foundation for what we were trying to do because it, it kind of looked like what we were doing. Um, but they had really thought things through exactly what the elevation should be in the colors and what not to do. So that was very helpful. Yeah. And um, uh, slowly we started adapting this to our own style. Yeah. But the big problem here was that the decision makers were not involved in this process. We were sitting together and the meeting got bigger and bigger, so we got the feeling like, you know, we're really, we're really making decisions here, but we... we weren't, we still had to pass those by the actual decision makers and sometimes they were like, no, nah, we're not going to do this. It's fun what you've cooked up here uh, with these 10 people in this corner of the building, but uh, we should do it this way. So uh, our solution was to also involve them in this process and we found that they found it very um, pleasant to be part of it and, and to think in this way. And We could also make decisions right on the spot. Um, and that, So that was very helpful. but. It got a little big. This was the corner of the building where we used to do our uh, design stand-up. Um, but as more and more people got there, it got a little bit uh, crowded, and it was time to make it uh, like an actual part of our process. So, uh, for example, this was the like the the first slide in our presentation before we, when we were just a small group, so we just open Google Slides, we dump a couple of screenshots in there, and that's fine. But um, we started to also design the slides and the process around it. And the most important thing we did with that is to also switch it from 
um, focusing on the person, what the person has done to focusing on what has happened in this area in this for this product or this project that we're doing because it it kind of turned into a stand up at some point and, and people were sort of you know you could see if someone had done a lot or if they hadn't done something that week it sort of kind of got a little personal and that was not good we wanted to have a an open arena where we could all come at it from the same playing field yeah and so by making it focused on the subjects, we could all stand back and take a look at it and comment freely on the things we were doing. And so that's worked out very well for us. Uh, this is a little bit where we're at right now, um, doing these meetings every two weeks. Uh, you can see on the right there is uh, Joost de Valk, the founder of the company. And uh, so he's involved directly in the process and he, he likes talking about these design things. much faster and much more consistently. Yeah. And so now we're finally getting towards a design language. And when we're, we all speak the same language and we understand why we're trying to design these things. And that was kind of our goal because when we started thinking about open source design, we had this image in mind of like eventually we got to, it, it would be really great if we could open source how we design so that people outside our company could also contribute designs. We have uh, contributors on our GitHub repos that contribute code and, and fixes for our products, but not design. You know, they can do a suggestion, but they they don't know how it should look. That's still up to us. But if we could open source it, then they could also be involved in that step of the process. But at the beginning, we had no idea how to get there, and now we finally understand that through these steps, we get very close to to doing this. Yeah. So the next step for us would be to make the design system easily editable for people that are not designers. Um, we have someone working on it now that's, that's built up the entire design system based on our feedback and he's make a design kit that we can use in Sketch so we have all the elements that we commonly use in our designs that we can just drop in there and change the colors, change the fonts and everything will be exactly like it should so there's no more confusion when people have to uh, implement it. So make sure to document the changes because we want to know where we came from, why we make these choices, what the philosophy is behind the colors we use or the types of buttons. And um, so we're looking to, to document that more clearly. Um, and then eventually, like I said, we want to make it available to people outside our team and outside our company. So even if marketing has a nice idea for something on a page they can look at the design system and say oh, I want to use these components and it will immediately look good um, and what will be even better which we're still trying to figure that out is if we can actually connect it to the react components we use in our in our products so that the design actually is also reflected in what we actually build and what the de developers use to build the product and then eventually we hope to reach the open source design for our company. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Sorry, why didn't we choose what? Arena, yeah. Yeah, so why oh, the arena. Oh, the arena. Yeah, so why arena, which is like competitive and stuff like that. Repeat the question. Yeah. Repeat the question. So uh, your question is why, why did we choose such a, a sort of violent imagery for the, no, the no, thing we... Like, yeah. Arena, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. I guess yeah. it's just that's what it feels like. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that you have uh, thought of it better than we did. Yeah. <laughs> have you thought it more through? No, it's actually, it's, it's uh, for me, an arena is something where, where things are discussed. So where people can be invited to, uh, 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 to join and to discuss things. And uh, no, we didn't have that violent imagery of, of, of the concept or uh, uh, then, then you. Uh, yeah. You so could say we, we actually, with the playing field, what, what I was trying to say is, um, that it, that it is actually fun to contribute to a playing field where uh, and usually when you look at design and you say, well, design needs to have rules, have boundaries, uh, you tend to say, well, well that's boring. We, you know, it's an impact on my creative freedom um, and it takes, it takes a lot away from design. But I think uh, 
that it can be fun to watch in such a playing field, add to it, contribute to it. I think that is where the creativ creativity lies. Um, so I think the, the imagery for the playing field was a lot more positive. Uh, no, but I didn't have any negative uh, in, in notation with the arena. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah? after we started doing this because yeah, the, the reason we started the design meeting was mostly to get the designers to talk to each other you know to and that just talking helps with better understanding where the other person's coming from and um, what we've definitely seen is that now that we have a bit of a common language to talk about our designs is not so subjective anymore so we, it's not like I don't like this maybe it should be a different color purple we, we know these buttons have this color for this reason, and that's why they should be like this. And if we don't like how it looks in this design, maybe we should consider changing the color of these buttons across everything, but then it's more of a considered uh, thing. Plus it adds an, a, a layer of professionalism, because we, we were, and I was... ...things together, it was very personal, but it... Be This, these were uh, very important steps in, in a more professional look at, an, uh, at design and the way we practice design. So that changed the culture definitely, yeah. Uh, there was a Yeah, definitely. Like like I said, material was a whole design system, and we were like, "This is awesome!" Because they also have the the React uh, uh, link up. We were like, "This is what we we love to have." But then it was like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah, yeah." And we're we're uh, we still have a long way to go as well. So we're st we're always trying to learn from those examples, definitely. We don't have all the answers ourselves. So this is, uh, uh, I hope it came across that way, but this was a humble version of how we want to do things because we don't have all the answers and we're definitely not there yet. That, that, that utopian open source arena uh, graphic that Tim showed you, uh, we're not there yet. So we're, so we're still in the Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. yeah, I think in the beginning we were absolutely not aware of this, and it was just by the virtue of that the room we were in was very small that we couldn't invite everyone because we'd have ten more people there. Um, I started looking at because we had three people from the marketing team, and I was like, maybe it should be just one. Trust. And, and then we started transitioning a little bit more. Okay, this, this, it has to be simple. But maybe not everybody that's just interested in looking at what we're doing. So that yeah. definitely helped. But and, there, and there is a distinction between adding value to the process and uh, just wanting to, to update the company on what you're doing. So, so that is openness as well. Feeling of what the design team is doing. I think that is... Uh, valuable, valuable in its in that it that it adds to the value in in, in terms that it um, that it generates revenue. So. Oh, 
size in such a sense. I'm not a designer. I've gone through this process by adding more and more people. So how does that work? I don't know. Like, I don't know. I think Definitely need people that make decisions. So, great ideas, but in the end, you just need someone. And um, and with us, it's still uh, it's still Yoast. He's our product uh, chief product officer. Do I, did I say that correctly? So he calls the shot in the end. So um, we do a lot of the thinking for him, but in the end, he he has a general idea of what he wants, and then he calls the shots. So. Uh, so there are two in in our process. There are two uh, uh, directors involved that, that that call these shots. So leadership is very important still. As you see, your design needs to become aligned within the design department, and then you have this more external showcase, more like a show and tell. Or is it all all the creative process is actually still in that meeting where you like come to an alignment? Yeah, it used to be that the, the design meeting was the place, especially with they want to have enough information to make the decision. And they don't want to sit there and think about the whole thing. So it's, I think we're now sort of transitioning into. So it also was kind of a, a, a thing we started because we liked sitting together and discussing these things. And now that it's an official process, we're like, you know, we kind of, we've kind of lost the creative spark in this or something. So now we're thinking, yeah, but we can just start another thing that's, that we do before that. Like you say, just sit together with the designers, say, all right, these are the projects. So what are we going to do about this? What are we going to present? It's these things. Okay. And then we go to the design meeting. I think that's going to be our next step to really yeah. implement something like that. Yeah. yeah. Go on. Yeah. I have one question. Um, I really like this idea of shared language. This is super important to be productive, to collaborate with people with different backgrounds. And definitely it's very expensive. When, and it's easier to do in a smaller group when you meet every time and you agree on the language you use. Because even now, probably, we all have different ideas when we say the science system, when we say uh, any term. So if you want to make it open, more open source, and uh, open source known as to be usually distributed, like, do you document your ideas? Do you have, or is it just meeting? Or to share a language you develop and share like in more distributed way? Yeah, I think we're not nearly there yet in a, that ideal situation. But what we started to do, because we were making these slides for the meeting instead of just opening Sketch or Photoshop and showing what we were working on, we, we have to think about how we're presenting what we're making, um, put them in order in the slides, and then the slides can later be viewed by everyone in the company and we update it with the, the decisions we make during the meeting so that everyone, even if they can't be there, they can see, ah, oh, this is what happened in this design meeting, okay. and then. They can come to us maybe if they have questions. But we'd like to formalize that more to actually write down the decisions and put them in. We're going to do that uh, next, yeah. yeah and, and a <laughs> lot of our process happens in GitHub. So, so a lot of the issues and, and, uh, can, be, can be read and followed there. So, yeah. Yeah, actually, someone in our design team uh, this week sent us abstract, and it looks really interesting because that's one of the, the challenges we had for the versioning, especially, and how we're going to document these things because we can, right now we have a bunch of sketch libraries and all the designers can use them, but nobody that doesn't have sketch can use them. So we try to look at, like, Material has a website, um, um, and abstract uh, could also be very interesting in... Um, documenting the changes and, and versioning and so we're, we're definitely looking into more of those tools and if you have more suggestions uh, we'd love to hear them as well yeah cool cool nice.
Right. But Thanks. I don't know if they have like an open source plan like you have. I'm sure a lot of yeah. so We'll have to figure it out. Yeah. Cool. So I think we have two minutes and two seconds to go. We will have to wrap it up here. But if you wanted to discuss, we can Yeah. We'll be around, so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, so Thank you, water. <laughs> Thanks for having us. <laughs> yeah, uh, we will wait till next year with uh, more information. Yeah. How did it go? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I personally very much con concerned with this how to scale, uh, especially the language. And I think this is very important to yeah. about shared language. And it's something Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you see, that's the uh, nice thing to have less audience, then you can have a natural yeah, conversation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely yeah. true. Yeah. 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 So, so I hope, yeah, post yeah. it online, hope it gets yeah. uh, reached by uh, the audience and yeah. you will get more great ideas. Yeah. 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 Thank you guys. Right, yeah. thanks so much. Yeah. Who is our next speaker? Are you all next? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay.